Cyclings. So today I'm going to talk about EC Comics. So that might not sound like a familiar name at first, but this comic company that was founded in the early 1940s by Maxwell Gaines ended up gaining some notoriety by the early 50s when his son Bill Gaines took it over. Now the reason why was there was uh, an essay that was published called um, The Seduction of the Innocent that was talking about psychological damage in children due to the violent nature of comic books. EC Comics, which was originally educational comics and then became entertaining comics, had a lot of very interesting uh, stories that were published, including ripoffs of Ray Bradbury stories, noir, crime, suspense, but most notably their horror stories. Titles of which you'd probably recognize. The main issues that they would run would be for Tales from the Crypt, The Vault of Horror, and The Haunt of Fear. So, the violent nature of these comics ended up being called into question. There was a big legal battle, and then they ended up being banned from using the words death, horror, um, weird, or terror in the titles because it was considered damaging. Uh, but you would probably recognize those top three titles mostly because of the Crypt Keeper, the Vault Keeper, and the Old Witch that would be the hosts of these horror comics. Um, common themes in the comics included twist endings and Siamese twins and uh, like strange sardonic twists of humor and um, fairy tales and their modern adaptations, which were very popular in the early 1950s with children, but not so much with their parents. Pretty much the only re like surviving strain of EC Comics today is Mad Magazine, but otherwise they went bankrupt in the late 1950s. But from there, we do have the Tales of the Crypt series. So these aired through HBO, I think 1989 to 1994. I cannot remember for some reason. But these were through HBO. They're usually pretty violent, kind of campy, and have strange bits of humor in them. And the Crypt Keeper, especially his laugh, is certainly iconic. But I spent way too much money on a box set of these and need to really badly rewatch them because I have only watched it through all the way through once about a year and a half ago, two years ago, and probably should do so again. But that was the most notable way that people know about the Tales from the Crypt series. Aside from that, you have the Creepshow films, which are based off of that, and the Tales of the Dark Side movie, and the Tales of the Dark Side TV show. Uh, other adaptations would be the Tales from the Dark Side movie from 1973, um, The Vault of Horror, Weird Science, uh, Two-Fisted Terror, Demon Knight and Bordello of Blood from the 90s, um, Perversions of Science, which was another 90s TV show, Ritual, and all of these were pretty accessible. They, they have a very particular weird feel to them. It's very campy. It's very strange. There's like a childlike spirit to it, even if they're very, very violent. And I figured that this was an important uh, comic to remind people of as it approaches Halloween. So within the comic industry, when this was still going, notable artists such as Jack Cole and Bob Kane ended up being major illustrators for it. And their very fun grizzly style was later influencing of other comic writers and artists such as Robert Crumb, Alan Moore, Neil Gaiman, etc. So even though it's been defunct for 60 years, they still have their place in modern popular culture. And I figured they were worth highlighting. Until next time, Darklings.